Good evening all, and welcome. Things are sure to get spooky tonight, with the many tales of haunted homes to come your way. So get comfortable, and let the darkness take control. Number 1. I used to work doing maintenance at historic properties. There was a historic house museum I worked at, when it wasn't open to the public. It was part of a whole landmark site. There was a visitor centre with offices, but then, the house was about half a mile up a dirt road in a wooded area. Sometimes I worked with a crew, but there were a lot of times that I would be there alone. One winter day, when it was really cloudy and dark, I was working alone and get ready to replace some electric work on the exterior of the house. I went inside and turned off the circuit to the whole property, and I tested it. It was off. I locked the doors and went outside to work. After about an hour, I got down from my ladder and started walking around the house. And then, one of the lights inside the house turned on. I started to freak out, but thought that maybe someone was just playing a joke on me. I called the visitor center on my walkie-talkie, and they confirmed the only other person who was working me that day still hadn't left, and that all the keys were present and were accounted for. That's when I freaked out and ran the half a mile to the office. I made my co-worker come back with me to check out what was going on, but when we got to the house, the lights were off again, but the bulb was still warm. All the doors were still locked, and the circuit was still off. Still gives me the shivers to this day. Number 2 When I was in college, I was in my bedroom. The building was warm and modern and so I was more caught off guard. I guess you expect ghosts to be chilling in old stone buildings and whatnot. I lived in Lincoln, UK, which is a fairly old historical city. I was lying in bed one night, playing Pokemon Diamond. I was hunting for shinies. My friend had caught a shiny Spearow, and I was looking for something to counter it, and I was looking for something to counter it. I eventually came across a shiny Mareep. Ignoring my slight excitement chubby, I started battling. It should have been a routine, sleep and throw. I know things are never that simple. My Haunter's Hypnosis missed, and it countered with something paralyzing. For the next three turns, Haunter couldn't move, and I was just lobbing balls. An Ultra Ball caught it and hit the ground, and it started to rock on the floor. One, two, three, but then in the corner of my eye, I saw movement. I looked up above my white DS light, and at the end of my bed was a figure. It was a woman all in black, just staring. I stared back silently, brain frozen over, much like the path to Snowpoint City. Without looking away, I felt for the light switch and hit the lights. For some reason, I assumed that this would make her go away. It didn't. I shouted and jumped out of bed and ran. My housemates were all awake in the living room, and they were super concerned. We went back to the room, and there was nothing there. I got mocked for the rest of the year. Roll on four years, and I'm living on my own in China, Nanchang. In the winter, it gets cold and lonely. So being the social butterfly that I am, I decided to buy a pet bird from an old market. The guy gave me a fairly good deal on a majestic baguette. I don't know the English name for it. He assured me I would be able to teach the bird to speak. It didn't take long for the bird to become used to me, and eventually, it would happily sit on my head, hand, shoulder, but it would never talk. I named it Boromir 
after the most important character in the whole of the Lord of the Rings. As the winter went on, things started to get a bit strange. One night, I was sitting watching Arrested Development, when suddenly the birds started to laugh. Not that weird, right? Everyone laughs at Arrested Development, but this laugh was creepy. It started off high, and then got lower, and lower. A moment later there was a bang on my door. I opened it, and a Chinese man started shouting at me. I had no idea what he was saying. So, in typical Chinese fashion, he barged into my flat. He walked over to the balcony, one that I'd never even bothered to open, and started shouting shit at me. I walked over to the balcony, even though it was locked up, and was flooded. An outside tap was fully turned on, and water was pouring all down the side of the building. He had to go get a key, turns out he was maintenance, open the balcony and turn the tap off. It took a while, as the tap had been twisted so tight that it was stuck. In the background, Boromir just laughed. The second time I heard this laugh, I wasn't alone. Another foreigner teacher from Holland was sitting with me, and we were both drinking whiskey and listening to music. Suddenly he starts to laugh again. We watched the knob on the stereo turn on its own. First all the way up, then all the way down. At the time, I didn't make the connection, with the laughing and the weirdness. We were both pretty unnerved. One night, I brought a girl back with me. She was scared of birds, so I locked Boromir in his cage and covered the cage with a thick blanket. I went to bed, and I closed the bedroom door. She got a headache, and we went to sleep. I could hear the bird laughing through the cage and through the wooden door. We woke up to banging on the door. This time it was the bedroom door. Someone was in my apartment. The girl started to panic, in the way that girls do when there's an intruder. So I grabbed something heavy, and went over to the door and pulled it open. At first I thought there was no one there. Then I looked down, and Boromir was at my feet, silently staring. The girl didn't come back. And at this point, I decided the bird had to go. I put it back in its cage, and found a friend who said he would be willing to take it, but I had to wait a few days. The final night I was in bed, I heard the laughing again. It filled me with dread, and waited for something to happen. Nothing did. I fell asleep, and woke up to my bedroom door slamming. And I woke up. There was someone in my room. She was speaking to me in a very hurried fashion, but there was no sound. She wasn't scary, like the Lincoln lady. She ran out the room, and I followed her, hitting as many light switches as possible, and then she was gone. The birdcage was empty, but I could hear the laughter. It was coming from my bedroom. I went back in, and sitting on top of my lamp was Boromir. I didn't sleep that night. The next day, I took Boromir to my friend's place. I told him everything honestly, as I'm not a total dick, and he was still eager to have the bird. And this is the part of the story that seems to be the most far-fetched, but I swear down that it happened. I gave the bird to my friend, and as I was going to leave, in a little voice I heard, I'll miss you. That's the end. The bird escaped from my friend's house a few months after that, and was never heard from again. Number 3 I live in a haunted house. They say ghosts aren't real, and everyone says I must have imagined it. But I know what I saw. This was an old farmhouse out in rural Norway, that always had a reputation for being haunted. The house belonged to my, now ex, wife's family. No one was staying there. It was her uncle's summer cottage, and we needed a place to stay. So we used it. It was actually a very comfy place, nestled in a valley on the fjord. We bought our cat with us from the US when we moved as well. And I loved it there. Everything was relatively normal for the first few months. But that's when the voices started. At first, they were indistinguishable. 
just the muffled noises of women speaking from far away. Easy enough to dismiss. But things got more intense. One night, the lights came on in the kitchen, and we could smell food cooking, and there were women talking in there. Now, I should note that she had kind of a nosy family that would just show up whenever they felt like it. But this was three in the morning, and I was angry more than I was freaked out. I got up and headed towards the kitchen, still hearing the voices. However, the moment I pushed open the kitchen door, the voices stopped. The lights were still on. The oven was turned off but warm, and the room smelled of food. But there was no sign of anyone being in there, other than the lukewarm oven. Things started to get more sinister after that. There were screams in the cellar and the attic, usually in the middle of the night, and the cat was getting increasingly agitated as time went on, acting as she could see things that weren't there, chasing things that were invisible and hissing at the air. This led up to the event that had us nope the hell out of there. We woke up to the cat, making this horrid howl and screeching noise in the living room. I go to investigate what's happening, and I didn't see her right away. But there she was, my white, fluffy, blue-eyed cat, standing on the ceiling in complete defiance of gravity, her eyes glowing red in the country moonlight and howling. My wife came out and saw this as well, and screamed. The cat stopped howling, and just stared at us. The cat opened her mouth, and said, Get out, in Norwegian, in the voice of an old woman. As soon as the words were uttered, the red glow faded from her eyes, and she fell from the ceiling onto the floor, got up, and acted like nothing had happened. We slept at her parents that night, and moved out the next day. That was enough. Number 4 I lived in a house with four girls and four animals in college. One night, I happened to have the house to myself, which was fabulous, because I had a paper to write. So I'm in bed with my laptop, and I hear a scratch at the door. It's the dog, Miko, and he's shaking and whining. As soon as I open the door, the two cats, Ralph and Bina, streak in behind him and jump on my bed. I squeeze in between all of them and resume my studying. Suddenly, Ralph's hair stands on end, and Miko starts to whine. Bina's claws are digging into my feet, and at that very moment, I hear footsteps upstairs in the hallway. It's a pretty short hallway, probably around 20 feet or so, but the footsteps keep walking and walking and walking past where the outer wall of the house into the next door neighbor's house. Miko starts growling when the footsteps turn around and I hear them sprinting back in our direction, and then a door slams shut. By this point my heart is racing, and Miko is barking up a storm, so I grab a baseball bat and walk upstairs. No one was in the house, but me and the animals. Number 5 I did not believe in ghosts. Sure, I was entertained by the notion, but anyone who came out and stated that they believed in ghosts, I dismissed as new age hippies or whatever. And then, I lived in a haunted house. It started out as little things. The bathroom would open violently if anyone ever closed the latch, so often that I came to count on it. I asked my roommate, if he ever noticed a red light in the spare bathroom, as I always did. When walking up the stairs in the dark, 
he did. I'd always go into the spare room to investigate, but could never find the source of light. These things I could explain away. Then, weirder things started to happen. One night, I was sitting in the living room with my girlfriend and my roommate, when I noticed the shape of a woman's face appear in the pane of glass on the windows of each other room. We all witnessed this. Even then, I tried to explain it away as a trick of the light. What finally convinced me that something was happening was that one time when I was brushing my teeth, something tugged instantly on my sleeve. I'm 100% sure that I didn't catch it on anything. Have you ever been fishing? It was like a fish was nibbling on the line, except on my t-shirt sleeve. That freaked me out. Still, stranger things happened. We'd hear footsteps upstairs whilst home alone. I often saw shadows out of the corner of my eye, and one time, I even saw a shadow whilst looking right at it, in the middle of the room. Not up against the wall, and I moved around to make sure. For five minutes or so, twice, while heading up the stairs to my room, for bed, I heard a woman's voice say, good night, to me over my shoulder. The strangest thing that's happened was New Year's Eve three years ago. My roommate and I were hosting a party, and were waiting for people to show up, sitting in the living room. Suddenly, I felt something brush against my arm, and the light bulb in the lamp I was sitting beside exploded. There were a few other things that happened, and some I'm forgetting I'm sure, but the fact is that too many strange things happened for it to be a coincidence. I have since moved out of the house, but the belief remains, something strange was happening there. Number 6 It all started when I was around 7 months pregnant with my daughter. I was asleep in bed with my husband. Suddenly, I woke up and looked out the doorway to our room. I saw a toddler, who I thought was our two-year-old son, walk in front of the doorway dragging a blanket behind him, and then walk away into the laundry room. I instantly got chills, and the hair on my neck was standing on end. But I figured it was just our little guy sleepwalking, like his dad used to do as a child. I woke up my husband, and asked him to get our son, and take him back to bed. He looked puzzled, but got up and went to the laundry room. Jaden isn't here, sweetheart, he said. I was baffled. I had been watching the laundry room entrance the whole time, and I hadn't seen him leave. My husband then went into our son's rooms across the house, and he was there, sound asleep under the blankets in his bed. Eerie, but wait, there's more. I dismissed the occurrence as pregnancy brain, and went on with my life. Several months later, after our daughter was born, I was in the shower while the kids were down for a nap. I was rinsing out my hair when I heard footsteps, little running footsteps. I opened my eyes and heard a giggle, and saw a little boy, not the clothes that my son was wearing, in a red shirt and jean shorts running across my bathroom into the closet. Strangely, I wasn't freaked out. This happened several times over the last five years since I first moved. I'm never really freaked out by him, and he has aged. He now seems to be four. He always runs whenever I'm in the shower, like he's chasing something. The most recent encounter I've had was one morning when my husband and I were asleep. My two eldest kids of five and three came in to wake us up. They came in and stood on my husband's side of the bed. He was awake, but didn't open his eyes. I told them both to go potty, 
and I would turn on a show for them in our room. I told my oldest son to let his little sister use our bathroom for him and for him to use the one down the hall. He just stood there, so I repeated to myself and he turned and went down the hall and my daughter went into our bathroom. I sat up waiting for them to return and my son came back and sat on the floor. After a minute he said, Hey mum, can you turn on the show please? I said, Let's wait for your sister. He turned around and said, She's still asleep mum. I said, No she isn't, I saw her go into my bathroom. I got out of bed to check on her. My poor daughter had fallen asleep sitting on the toilet before, so that's what I expected. I got into the bathroom and it was empty. I quickly went to her room and there she was, asleep. I had been watching the whole time since my son had come in, with who I thought was my daughter. Since then, I hear little footsteps all the time upstairs, especially if we're downstairs or in the hallway. Number 7. My firstborn used to get night terrors and when I would go running into his room because he was screaming bloody murder at 3am, the room would always seem ice cold and he was staring at the same corner in the room every damn time. I have no doubt he sees things, he's an odd soul. When we moved from that house, the night terrors stopped. About a week after moving into our current house, my husband and I were laying in bed about to fall asleep when we both heard a glass shatter. We sat up straight in bed, hair bristling on the back of our necks. I was sure we were getting broken into. My husband got up and checked the house. Nothing. Then I got up and we both searched every window, every room, everything no broken glass. It sounded as though someone had taken a large glass face and thrown it to the ground. It was so loud, but we never found anything broken. Three nights later we heard it again. My husband was asleep at the time and didn't hear it. But I woke him up so that he could help me check. Again nothing. Then it never happened again. The first couple of years being in this house, I would hear people talking. If I were upstairs, I would hear them downstairs and vice versa. I could hear them walking up and down my stairs, thumping and creaking and all. They never really scared me. Their voices were pleasant and conventional, but here's the weird part. I've only heard them when my husband was gone. Like clockwork, he would leave for work or go out and then a few minutes later, bam. I've also heard a baby crying in my house. It's always stopped the moment I go to investigate. Weird. I've been followed by something in my house. I'm not sure what it was, but it scared the crap out of me. It followed me around all day, one day, making noises behind me, opening and shutting cupboards and drawers, moving things slightly on the counter. It only happened once, but it lasted nearly six hours. My kids didn't notice anything, and I didn't try to call their attention to it. I'm sure whatever it is I've got in my house doesn't like that I'm saying this. Suddenly, I'm starting to feel a bit sick to my stomach, and I've got butterflies and a bit of a panicky feeling. Number 8. My house was haunted, and one week of it was off the chain. It was so creepy that the first night I was awoken by hearing these light bangs over and over again. But then, my son started screaming. I ran into his room and he said, Mummy, please make the drawers stop. They keep opening and closing by themselves. The next night, I went to get my newborn baby's bottle warmed up. And as I bent over the table, the light bulbs in the chandelier over me all exploded and glass came raining down. The third night, a balloon was ripped out of my son's hand 
and floated all over the house. It went in the basement and then upstairs to the attic. The craziest thing is you could see the string pulling it along. The next night, my neighbor called at 3 a.m. asking me if it was okay to check on the kids and that the police were on their way. She had called them. She said there was over a dozen people surrounding my house. When I looked outside, I saw no one. The police came and there was no signs of anyone at our property. The next night, my other neighbors started pounding on the door, asking why the lady in my attic kept staring at him through the window. Where the window was, there was no flooring. No one could even get over to that window. But it finally came to a head when I went to take a shower. I was alone in the house and I put my newborn in the middle of my bed. I had swaddled her tight and had put cushions all around her. She was also laying on her side pillow that kept her sleeping on her side. When I got out the shower, something had picked her up off the side sleeper pillow and moved her to outside of the cushions, dangerously close to the edge. There was no way in this world a swaddled newborn could lift herself up out of those pillows and overtop a big body cushion. No way. I started screaming at whatever was in my house and said, You are out of here. You never mess with my kids, ever. I said, I got Jesus Christ on my side and I had the house blessed and never had a problem again. We moved though, and the next two people that bought our house moved out a couple of months later. The house is currently vacant. They say something isn't right, and they keep giving the house back to the bank. Number 9 Back when I was in college around seven years ago, I had to move from an apartment to another last minute. Because, well, I was a lazy college student and hadn't made any plans. My parents were in town, so we were looking for something quickly. Luckily, we found something pretty cheap and somewhat nice right in front of the university. They were thrilled, and I was just happy this was all over. So I move into this kind of four bedroom basement, which was already furnished. They said the last tenant cancelled last minute, and I only needed it for three months of the summer. So he was giving us a fantastic deal. The first room was the main room, which consisted of a living room and a little table to eat. Immediately on the right of it was the kitchen and the bathroom. The bedroom was on the left and there was some kind of weird and small hall connection joining to the living room. Since the start, I always kind of felt uneasy about that bedroom for some reason and preferred to sleep in the living room since there was already a comfy sofa bed in there and there were no windows in the bedroom. Throughout the semester, I felt countless times that someone was watching me from the bedroom when I was alone, either watching TV or playing video games. It was a weird and eerie feeling, to the point where I preferred closing the door leading to the bedroom altogether. I wasn't home that much, and sometimes I slept at a friend's, but every time I came back, it felt like I wasn't alone in the apartment. There were never any sounds or sights, just a strange feeling. I spoke of it to my friends, and they all laughed since I was the superstitious kind. So I kind of brushed it off the whole time and thought nothing of it when I finished the semester and I just kind of moved on with my life. About two years ago, one of my friends from college texts me. Hey Jack, it's Dave. The door number you lived at in that creepy me basement back at uni was number five, right? I was like, yeah, why? He then sends me a picture of an old local newspaper page. He had been looking through them at the library, looking for a picture of him back in his college football days. It was the obituary section from 2009. The picture of a young and good looking female student, and next to her picture, 
was the picture of a door and a dress, which I recognised very well. She hung herself in the bedroom closet. Number 10. In my culture, if someone dies in a violent way, we should burn their clothes immediately. My uncle, who was a degenerate loser and a predator, died in a fitting fashion. He was dragged by a car and thrown into a ditch. The coroner's office released his clothes that he was wearing at the time of his death. My uncle warned his sister, my mother, that his wife not look at them, but they got curious and wanted to see. I followed them downstairs, and they made me stay outside the room whilst they were snooping. Whilst we were down, there we heard a smash upstairs. We ran upstairs to see a bunch of glasses were shattered, and no one was in the house. My aunt and mother were spooked but didn't think much of it. The house was in the middle of nowhere, and it was the middle of winter. Our wakes are 24 hours long, and someone must always stay with the body. A family friend was leaving the wake, and drove by the accident scene. She said, she was certain she saw my dead uncle, and he smiled at her, in a very unsettling way. We woke up the next morning, the last day of the wake, and one day before the funeral, my uncle was rattled, and I heard him tell my mother and auntie that he heard the crunching of boots on snow. It was 4am. He went outside with a shotgun and no one was there. My aunt and mother came clean about what they'd done, and my uncle said he had warned them, and they started a fire and got rid of the bloody clothes. He was buried the next day, and no one bothered them again. Number 11. When I was 16, my friends and I had an apartment in the building that his parents owned. It was an old building in Chicago, and had tunnels that Al Capone and company had built that his dad blocked off. We used the roof as a place to go and smoke cigarettes. You had to get through the attic to get there, and there were no lights, so the only lights we had were from our shitty flip slash brick phones. One day, my friend Manny and I were going up to smoke. I told Manny that I had to take a whiz, so I did in the apartment. I went up and felt like there was someone there. It was pretty common for us to mess with each other, so I said, Manny, I know it's you, stop mucking around. I followed the shadow figure, thinking it was him. I yelled, Stop playing, I know it's you, as I followed the figure. Then I heard from downstairs, Manny? What? I was terrified. I had just followed him into a corner. I ran back downstairs and asked him where he was. He was talking to his girlfriend at the time downstairs, and I told him I didn't want to go upstairs. I know what I saw. People always try and say, maybe the shadow was your own, but that's not possible. I had a Motorola flip phone at the time, and I was holding that in front of me. I saw a shadow person, and I know others have too. Number 12. This happened at my old house in Toronto. Three of us lived on the main floor of a house, and a stranger lived in the basement. We didn't know much about the guy in the basement, besides that he was a big gamer and smoked a lot of weed. Almost every night, I could hear him below me coughing up a storm, as if he were about to die. I would hear this quite often, and I began to realise this wasn't really directly below my room. He appeared to be coughing in a room under our garage. Sure enough, my roommate and I went to the garage and jumped up and down to hear the hollow room below us. Eventually, the guy decided to move out, and we were able to move our friend in the basement. It would be our first time down there, and I was excited to see the weird room under the garage. Our friend took us into the laundry room, which was under my room, where we discovered a creepy little red door that led to a cement room filled with trash and old furniture. It was basically a dungeon. 
This is where he smoked weed every day? It was full of mould, and seemed dangerous to breathe the air. Not the exciting room we were hoping for. Our friend didn't understand our need to see the weird room, because he was pissed off at the state of the apartment. I was surprised, since it appeared the other guy had moved out, and our friend had moved in a day after. Not much time to clean, but then my friend told me the guy had been gone for two weeks already, and nobody cleaned it. I thought about this for a moment, and immediately got chills down my back. The last two weeks the guy was gone, and I could still hear the horrible coughing coming from that creepy room. Number 13. I have a story to tell. This isn't my house, but my cousin's, but I practically lived there anyway. I don't believe in ghosts at all, but my family does, vehemently. Growing up in an Asian country, superstitions were practically fact, and it wasn't easy for a person to dismiss them. When my cousin said he saw a strange man standing outside the gate, muttering odd things and leaving, the family were a little taken aback. Who was this guy? Immediately, everyone thought the house had been marked or cursed. Several strange events were reported. One of the girls said that when she entered her bedroom, she saw a little woman dressed in white Victorian style clothing on her bed crying, as we were formerly an English colony. Doppelgangers of family members were seen. At night, more than a few people reported seeing a strange furry figure peering furatively through into the bedroom. It all reached a breaking point, when my cousin suddenly broke out into a fit in the middle of the day. He had no history of epilepsy whatsoever. He was writhing on the floor, babbling incoherently about a bearded man standing in the corner of the room glaring at him. The family decided they had had enough, and went to a local priest to cleanse the house. Things seemed to settle after that. I personally never bought into it, but as a child I couldn't really say much. Who knows what really happened anyway. Number 14 When I still lived with my parents, I experienced some weird things. My room was in the basement, and I remember a couple of times that I heard footsteps upstairs. But when I went to investigate, I found myself home alone. I remember one night, when I heard someone come downstairs. A few moments later, there was a door opening somewhere. I called out but received no answer, and I asked my parents about it the following morning, but they had been fast asleep upstairs the entire night. I also heard faint short whispers at the time, but I usually just dismissed it all as random noise emitted by an old wooden house. The thing that freaked me out the most, however, was that one time, I saw a shadow in the middle of a corridor, not up against a wall. I caught glimpses of shadows and movement in the corner of my eye at times, but I usually dismiss it as some hair that got stuck out in the corner of my eye, or me just being tired in general. This one, however, I was walking down the hallway towards the bathroom, when there was a shadow that flashed and then disappeared right in the middle of the hallway, just a couple of feet away from me. It was gone in less than a second, but it had not been in the corner of my eye. It had been in the centre of the hallway and in the centre of my field of vision. It was over so fast, but it was definitely the shadow of a person wearing a long dress. I moved out of the house almost two years later, and I haven't had anything remotely similar happened to me since. Number 15 When my mum married my stepdad, we moved into his little brick house in some shitty town in Texas. We were all getting along and settling in nicely. Me and my stepbrother were getting along, which relieved our parents, and we were pretty much happy. Except that, I started waking up in the middle of the night to see someone, a man I thought, standing in the doorway. All I could see was a silhouette of a large man, with a large, brimmed hat, taking up most of the doorway. 
It was so strange, I remember. It was dark. All the lights in the house were off. Yet somehow, this thing stood out as a shadow. I could feel him looking at me. And he would raise a finger to his mouth, and I heard him go, Shh. Then he would kind of laugh and go, Boo. And it sounded like he screamed it. And yet my stepbrother never woke up. He didn't remember anything like this, I asked. Anyway, I would pull a blanket over my head for a little while, shivering and listening. Nothing ever happened after that. I never heard another noise. But when I was brave enough to peek out from under the covers in the doorway, it would be clear. And I would lay awake for the rest of the night until the sun came up, and I felt that I could sleep again. And I only got a couple of hours sleep after that, because my parents were dicks, and would make me wake up and shit. And then this happened. It was a regular occurrence. Every week or so, sometimes every month, but it would always happen. That was until we moved a few years later. My stepdad and stepbrother swear they had never heard or experienced anything unusual. But my mum says that on some nights, when my dad wasn't there, as he was a night shift police officer in a major city close to the shit city we lived in, she would feel someone crawl into bed with her. And she said that once, she felt the covers being pulled, and she freaked out and jumped and turned the light on. Number 16. I was staying the night at a friend's house, when I was 13. We were watching The Shining with her older sister, and another friend, when I saw a black figure in my peripheral vision. I turned my head all the way to the right, and watched this solid black figure, in the shape of a man wearing a cowboy hat, walk from one side of the house to the other. I didn't say anything to my friend when it happened. I thought maybe my mind was just playing tricks on me, because the movie was scary. After the movie, my friend's sister and all the others left the house to stay elsewhere. My friend's parents were out of town. In the middle of the night, I woke up to someone stomping on the stairs towards the room we were sleeping in. We thought maybe her sister had just come home and run up the stairs to bed. We went to check and found no one. We heard the stomping a few more times, and then a really loud bang on the wall. The walls between our bedrooms and the outside of the house, on the second story. My friend looks at me straight in the eyes and says, Did you see the man earlier? I swear. No one else was home, and my friend was just as terrified as I was. We hid under the blankets, and didn't come out until we saw sunlight. This isn't my only unexplainable encounter. My dad's house when I was a kid was scary to say the least, and haunted, if you'd believe it. We used to see a man in a military uniform in the long hallway leading towards my brother's bedroom. The security alarms would go off for no reason, like someone was opening and closing the door over and over again. And one time, we had a decorative plate fly off a shelf and hit the mirror across the room, with absolutely no human intervention whatsoever. Number 17 This is a story about my house and it really scares me. My friend's father owned an apartment in downtown Fredericksburg, just so that he could come and visit with the kids more easily on weekends and stuff like that. It was not too far from where we grew up. Anyway, this building was split into four different apartments, my friends being on top. Since her dad was rarely there, we would sometimes go there and hang out or get some space from our families. One day, my friend was finishing up an art project, and we decided to go hang out in the apartment while she did this. The building apparently already had a history of being haunted. There are many stories about an old man 
being seen around. I think her father was told someone was murdered there in the 80s, and generally just creeping people out. Now, while I get excited by the paranormal, I have never seen or experienced a thing, so I shrugged it off. So there we are, sitting in the living room, when I start to yawn a little. My friend tells me I can go lay down in the bedroom, about 20 feet from where she was sitting on the couch. I leave the bedroom, open the door, and we call back and forth to each other for a while, before I eventually drift off to sleep. I'm out for maybe 30 minutes, until I hear my friend whisper softly in my ear, Wake up. This is quickly followed with a more stern, Get up. This gives me the chills for some reason. She then says something inaudible, so I sit up and respond with a groggy, Huh? I rub my eyes and look around, only to realise that she has never left her original spot in the living room, and was in fact, staring at me in horror. No words were said. She packed up her things, all the while shaking, as I sat impatiently by the door. Once we get in the car and make our way home, we acknowledge that we had both heard something in the room with me. This wasn't what had frightened her, however. At the same time, I had heard the whispers. She thought I was talking in my sleep. She glanced up through the corner of her eye and saw me walking around the bed, shadowy in the approaching evening. Light was off in the bedroom and on in the other. Seconds later, she saw me sit up in bed, apparently awakened by someone that wasn't there. The scariest part is that we couldn't correlate any kind of sense. Because at the same time I heard someone talking to me. She saw a figure pacing around me. It really, really creeped me out for a long time. I went back there a few times before they ended up selling the place, but never again in the evening or at night. There were no incidences with other friends, but I was never there anymore. Apparently, books took to flying off shelves for no good reason. Shame that it's so scary though, because it's a really cool apartment. Number 18. I don't believe my mother's house is haunted. Nothing strange ever happened except for this one time. I was woken up from my sleep in the middle of the night, by what I thought was my little sister. No one had said anything or touched me in any way to wake me up. But that feeling you get, when someone is just standing there in the room, staring at you, you can feel their presence. Well, that's what woke me up. The presence of a little girl. It was pitch black, so I couldn't see a thing. But I could feel someone there, and it felt like it could be my little sister. But whoever it was, was angry. The malevolent presence of a young girl. I asked quietly, Marie, what are you doing in here? I got no response, just felt that angry presence. I told myself I was imagining things, but I was paralyzed with fear by this point. It was very, very angry, and I felt it pretty heavily. After a few minutes, I convinced myself that it had to be my younger sister, who was absolutely furious with me, or perhaps was sleepwalking around, and I was working myself into a fit for no reason. Then, I was suddenly struck in the crotch, not too hard, but definitely hard enough to make me an angry 14-year-old, moaning, why? A little more loudly than I should have, wondering why my sister wanted to punch me in the balls. I turned on the light to find that no one was standing at the door and it was shut tight. Utterly confused, I went to check on my mother and sister, both sound asleep. I didn't get back to sleep that night. That's something strange that's happened. I don't know if it was a ghost, and I doubt my mind could easily play such a trick on me, and how it made my balls hurt so badly. Number 19. From the ages of around five to 12, 
I lived in what I believed was a haunted house. My first experience well, was when I was around eight or so. I had woken up just as the sun was about to rise, and my bed was directly next to a window. I sat up and peered out the blinds and saw the glow from the sun starting to rise. I saw what seemed to be maybe a 40 year old man standing on the curb, staring directly at my window. I was startled and quickly pulled my head away from the blind. I sat there for around 10 seconds before I pulled a blind slightly to the side to look again. This time, the man was about a few feet away from my window. I screamed in horror and moved away from it. My mother came in, but no one was outside the window when she looked. The man looked slightly older and was wearing reading glasses. His complexion was white and translucent. He looked like a regular man, but the second time I looked out his mouth, it was gaping wide open, almost as if he had a broken jaw hanging from his mouth. A couple of years later, I had my second experience. I walked out of my bedroom at night to get a drink from the kitchen. The lounge room was in the centre and the kitchen was joined to it on the left. On the right side of the lounge room was the front door. I walked down the hall to the entrance of the lounge. My mother had left the light on during the night. So if any one of the kids woke up, they could move around very easily. As I got to the entrance of the lounge room, I noticed a figure to the right near the front door. A very tall woman was walking towards me. I stood frozen in fear as she walked past me and seemed to grab something out of a cork board in the kitchen. She then turned around and walked straight past me again and through the front door. As she did all of this, I didn't take my eyes off her, nor she did of me. She stared at me directly the whole time. She had the same complexion as the man, and I could clearly see wrinkles on her face. She was very tall, maybe close to seven foot. She had brown hair and a white gown on. I was fixated on her, but out of my peripheral vision, I could see what looked like a piece of paper, which she took from the cork board. The way she stared at me the whole time still horrifies me 20 years later. Telling this story to my family, when I was around 18, a few others had different encounters. My brother saw two dark figures sitting at the dinner table, seeming to be peeling potatoes. My little sister saw a boy poke his head around the doorframe as she sat in the bathtub. We moved out, and life went on. Number 20. This story is about when I was in an apartment haunting. My boyfriend and I decided to check out an open house in a neighborhood that we wanted to live in. The apartment was everything we wanted. While my boyfriend spoke to the landlord, I walked around alone, mentally decorating, in the bathroom and where there was a closet that took up the entire wall. I stood in the middle of the room with an open window to my left that let in a lot of light. Curious as how much closet space there was, I went to open the doors and the instant I put my hand on the doorknob, an image flashed in my head. Have you ever been so engrossed in a daydream that you're staring off into space, not really looking at what's in front of you? That's what it was like. The second I touched the door, what I saw was either a man from the waist up, so drenched in blood that no features were recognisable, or the man had been completely skinned and I was seeing muscle. I gasped and let go of the closet door. Shaking it off, I opened the second pair of doors instead. There was nothing inside, but I said hello to an empty room and then walked back to the living room. My boyfriend was still talking to the elderly landlord, but I didn't listen to a word. I looked back down the hallway to the bedroom, and even though I couldn't physically see anyone, 
I felt like there was a man standing in the hallway. He wasn't angry nor happy. All I sensed was that he was curious. I felt he was curious about the person he knew was there. I wasn't curious about him, and I no longer felt comfortable in that space. My boyfriend, however, was thrilled at the place, so I didn't tell him right away what happened. I just told him that I was uncomfortable being there. That night, I had a dream that I was standing in the room. Everything was completely silent and black and white. It was sunny, just like it had been earlier. I woke up with my heart beating fast, even though the dream wasn't scary. In the morning, I told my boyfriend what happened, but that if he really wanted the apartment, we could take it. I was just being silly. I was with my boyfriend when he called the landlord. The conversation seemed casual, but at one point, my boyfriend looked at me sharply. He hung up the phone and told me the landlord said that since we were taking the apartment, he was legally obligated to tell me that someone had died in the apartment. Turned out that a man had had a heart attack in there. Even though my boyfriend didn't believe in ghosts, he didn't want me to live with a ghost. So I asked that he call the landlord back and tell him that we wouldn't be taking the apartment after all. Bonus story. I held a real estate license just to help family members. I created their websites, traveled to locations to take pictures, before possibly listing. I was their tech guru basically. I maintained and knew the equipment. There was this one piece of property. The only thing I was told before traveling with them was that the owner had died and the family had decided to sell the house and property. While I was attempting to photograph the property, which adjoined a field containing a cemetery, I experienced all kinds of equipment failure. I knew I had fresh batteries and many media cards. I switched batteries several times along with media cards, but it refused to work. The screen kept reporting camera failure or 40 file unavailable to save. It was so frustrating, so I decided to rapid fire shots no matter how many times the camera is shut. My two tag team realtor relatives turned to the car and announced that they were leaving. It was a matter of fact statement, no rebuttal, but they were struck by silence. I said okay, and we all climbed in the vehicle. Breaking the silence, I related the odd equipment failures taking place. They didn't respond to me. Not a word was spoken. It was eerily quiet. No real estate banter as normal until we reached the bottom of the mountain and I thought to ask if the property was being listed. And if so, to return to take proper pictures. They told me the family wanted to sell, but they were conflicted because as the elderly man was dying, he told them that if he attempted to sell the homestead, he would return and haunt them. Something happened there that they weren't telling me. Once home, I took the media cards and transferred the images to my computer. There were only two images captured in my frantic session. One of them is missed right above a gravestone, and the other is where there is a black figure in the tree line of the property where horses had been spooked earlier. It was dark. The person was wearing a long coat. They were translucent and had horns on the top of their head. Yup. I'm glad it wasn't listed, or at least not to be on the team. Apparitions, spirit energy or whatever you'd like to call it, followed me on a regular basis. Friends told me it was a gift. Not one I was willing to accept. I eventually laid down picture taking and never took it up again. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed these stories about haunted houses. Some of my favourite topics. Really interesting to see other people's perspectives and experiences. Please be sure to let me know what you thought of the video in the comments section below, as well as smash that like button to let me know you enjoyed it, and subscribe to not miss your daily dose of horror. Just to let you know, the t-shirt sales will be coming to a close very soon. 
the Mortis Media merch store is going to be rethought out. There will be more stuff coming soon. But, at the end of January, all merchandise, with the exception of the Mortis Media logo t-shirt, will cease. So, if you'd like to get something, and have been considering it for a while, now would definitely be the time, because the same stock will not come again. If you have a story that you would like me to read on my channel, feel free to send it to my email, which you can find in the description, or post it to my reddit. But anyway, for now guys, I'm gonna sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.